Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar and introduction to International Underground Railroad Month 2021. Uh, my name is Amanda Pollock. I am the Visual Information Specialist for the National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom Program, and I am so excited to be here with you all today to talk about this, in this initiative created by Network to Freedom Partners. Before we get started today, I have a few housekeeping items that I want to go through. If you need to access closed captioning, you can click the button in the bottom right hand corner labeled captions. If you have questions throughout the webinar, please use the Q&A tool to submit a question. To open the Q&A tool, locate and click the icon on the top right corner with two speech bubbles and a question mark. We will address questions submitted at the end of the presentation. We are recording this webinar and it will be posted on the Network to Freedom website in the coming weeks. You can also view a recording of this webinar by clicking on the link you use to join us today as an attendee. We have a very full agenda for you today, so let's jump right into it. In 2020, 11 states and other entities proclaimed September as International Underground Railroad Month. Maryland's Office of Tourism initiated this commemoration in 2019 when Governor Larry Hogan proclaimed September as International Underground Railroad Month. Today, we're excited to introduce you to some of the leaders in planning commemorations for September 2021. We will go ahead and let each of them introduce themselves to you now. So I'm first going to pass you to Miss Liz Fitzgibbons. I just wanted to make sure I was on unmute. Um, my name is Liz Fitzsimmons. I am the Managing Director for the Maryland Office of Tourism and Film, and I am really happy to be here with you all today to be able to expand this amazing program and this great partnership that we have and invite more people to learn more about the International Underground Railroad Month. Doug, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Doug, Douglas Kilmer. I'm president of the U.S. National Committee of the International Council on Monuments and Sites, which is also known as U.S. ECOMOS. And I'm really very excited by this initiative, the, uh, the effort to make this a truly international network of uh, uh, the celebration of people who sought their freedom from slavery. So I want to thank everyone who is uh, involved in organizing this, and I'm really pleased involved and looking forward to what we do in the future. Thank you. I'm Diane Miller. I'm the program manager for the National Park Service's National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom. And I'm really thrilled that our partners have um, initiated this effort and I can't wait to see what happens in 2021. Hi, I'm Roy Finkenbein. I'm a, a professor of history at the University of Detroit Mercy and a member of the Michigan Freedom Trail Commission. And we're uh, looking forward to having many of you that are online for this program as partners going forward. So I am unmuting. So we're all here to talk about International Underground Railroad, Railroad Month, and it probably is a great idea for us to, to talk about what it is. I'm going to read the slides verbatim. Um, International Underground Railroad Month acknowledges, acknowledges the significance of the Underground Railroad and all those involved for its contribution to the eradication of slavery in the United States and as a cornerstone for a more comprehensive civil rights movement that follows. It honors the inspiring efforts of the people from around the world who have committed themselves to document, interpret, and share with the public the Underground Railroad through the National Park Service's National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom and relevant international organizations. As was stated earlier, we in 2019, um, let me give you the proclamation first. So if we can go to the next slide. And we have language that will be shared, but we looked at Maryland and the as being the most powerful underground railroad storytelling destination in the world. And I'll explain a little bit about that in a second, but we really wanted to highlight the extraordinary people who 
sought freedom and those who helped those seeking freedom. And we um, went to our governor and asked for him to declare September as International Underground Railroad Month. And of course, you know, being the great governor that he is, he did. And if we can go to the next slide. And why did we pick September? Well, two of the Underground Railroad's most notable figures who are pictured here self-liberated in September, Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman. And Maryland helped form their grit and determination for their, um, their efforts as they move forward through life and became the notable figures that they are on the Underground Railroad. And then, um, so we did it in 2019. That was the 170th anniversary of Harriet Tubman's self-liberation -liber and the 171st anniversary of Frederick Doug Douglass's uh, self-liberation. We can go to the next slide, please. So who, who were our first partners in this? Well, Maryland, uh, you know, that's our Maryland logo on the far left. Our good friends at the National Park Service, the National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom, our partners in the great state of Michigan uh, with the Mi Michigan Freedom Trail. And now joining us is U.S. ECOMOS um, in this endeavor. The, the, everyone came together in 2020. We moved it from a one state initiative in 2019 to a multi-state initiative in 2020. And of course, we are thrilled to welcome the U.S. ECOMOS to this. And with that, I am gonna hand the presentation over to to Doug to talk about their participation in this. Yes, thank you. Let's see. Um, hold on one second here. I, uh, there we go. Yeah, as I mentioned, I'm president of the U of U.S. ECOMOS, which is the United States National Committee of the International Council on Monuments and Sites, or ICOMOS. Um, but I'm also the vice president of the ICOMOS Advisory Committee, and as such, I'm chair of the National Committees Council for ICOMOS. And we have 107 national committees as members. So in collaboration with the Underground Railroad, Railroad Network to Freedom, we're exploring ways to make the network an international one. Uh, the Underground Railroad, as we know it today, extended well beyond the borders of the United States. We so far contacted ICOMOS national committees in Canada, Mexico, the UK, Brazil, and the Netherlands, and they've shown a great deal of interest. And we expect that many more will want to participate in this international extension of the network. What we will do um, in part is initially we'll send them forms to fill out and ask for the exact places where those who self-liberated settled and the stories that are associated with that. And all this will go into a geographical information system. We're also going to be asking for any examples of monuments that have been constructed to valorize the actions of freedom seekers. And as we know from the national parks, uh, and at one time I, I served in the National Park Service, it's the physical physical experience of going to a place that provides a tangible dimension of what has happened in the past. And in this case, it's very important that this past not be forgotten. There will be decisions to make as we contact other countries. For example, in Brazil, there's a World Heritage Site called the Longo Wharf. And at this place, 900,000 human beings arrived to be sold into slavery. Now, with our sister committees, should we explore what happened to those people and how they made their struggle for freedom? Also, there are stories emerging of those who found liberty even after being captured, but before they arrived in the Americas. In the slide shown here, you see the World Heritage Site of Cape Coast Castle in Ghana. Years ago, I was involved with a U.S. Ecomos project at Cape Coast. Here, captives were kept until European ships took them to the Americas. As they left, they passed through what was called, and is called, 
now the door of no return. It's quite an emotional experience to see this, that Cape Coast. Some of our colleagues in Europe are searching for evidence that some escaped after they were captured, but before they were placed in such slave trading posts. And more stories are emerging of revolts on ships as captives were taken from places like Cape Coast to cross the Atlantic. For the most part, the records that confirm these stories are in the European countries that were involved in the slave trade. And like us, these countries are trying to come to grips with this tragic history, just as we're attempting to, to do this in the United States now. So there are many opportunities to extend our network internationally, and some of them are obvious, closely associated with the underground uh, net railroad as we know it today. If we choose, we can extend our attention to other places and incidents that are associated with those who struggle for freedom. And again, I thank you so much for involving U.S. Egemos in this really important program. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the goals and thank you, Doug, and having your organization associated and helping us advance the international story is really amazing when we think of where we were just a few a couple of years ago. So thank you for your involvement and your your passion for this project. So what are the goals? Um, we want to inspire the public to travel to the Underground Railroad sites to learn the history associated with those sites and experience the mosaic of community, regional, and national stories of the Underground Railroad. We all know that history really comes to life when you go to those sites and experience being able to stand in those places that were integral in the story of the Underground Railroad. And really the, the one thing about this is to increase the amount of good, accurate information available about the Underground Railroad. We, we know that there are many, over the years, um, we have learned so much as the historians have gotten into the, the landscape. Um, we were just at an amazing event on April 20th where we, through a partnership, discovered um, Harry Tubman's father's house site and being able to, to learn even more about Harry Tubman's um, youth in Dorchester County on Maryland's Eastern Shore. We're, we're doing it. We're making the International Underground Railroad Month a yearly event, and we can only do that with more and more partners coming to the table and really helping tell the story. Doug made a really amazing observation when he, he shared with us that this wasn't a story that stopped at the American borders. So in 2021, we have 15 states, two indigenous nations, and three international ent entities participating. Our goal in 2020 was seven states and one Canadian location, and then um, 11 states, five countries, and three cities with official proclamations. So we invite you to please join us and help us reach these goals and help tell the story. And we cannot be working in this space without the great partnership that we have with the National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom Program at the National Park Service. And with that, I would like to hand the presentation over to Ms. Diane Miller. Thank you, Liz. So I just want to recap what happened last year. It was amazing to me to see how much people participated and how much content was developed and it was really inspiring. So last year, uh, Eastern National, which is a cooperating association for the National Park Service, they run the bookstores in many of our parks, created digital passport port stamps for virtual experiences. So if you had something online that people could experience a tour or some sort of activity, you could get a virtual passport stamp and they created a special landing page listing all of those uh, experiences and they had 38 Underground Railroad experiences there. Um, we really tried to emphasize in the days of COVID virtual tours, driving tours that people could do um, without going into buildings 
and ways to experience the journey in the landscape. So this year, I think we'll be trying to um, emphasize the same sorts of things. And if we could go to the next slide, I want to give a few examples of some of the things that that we did or our partners did. In Oldham County, Kentucky, they created a podcast for every day of the month, 30 days of stories. And there's a picture of a gentleman with headphones on there in the left. Uh, he's recording his podcast for that series. Um, in Kansas, the Freedom's Frontier Heritage Area uh, were quite active. They developed a, a mobile app. They integrated the Underground Railroad stories into that. They made sure all of their Network to Freedom sites had virtual passport stamps and actually physical passport stamps for the days that we can all go out and visit real sites again. They had videos of their Network to Freedom members and really um, did a stellar job with all of that. The Michigan Freedom Trails Commission, of which Roy is a member, had a virtual conference with all of their sessions recorded. Those are available online so you can see that great content. In Pennsylvania, people across the state came together and collaborated on developing programming and a statewide poster of dates important in the Underground Railroad history of Pennsylvania. So there's a, a little thumbprint of what that poster looked like here on the screen. Uh, in Southern Indiana, the Carnegie Center for Art and History and their partners developed special web um, programming and a web page that people could find out about that. In Southwest Florida, a number of partners got together and created a video about Angola, which is a Network to Freedom site associated with Black Seminoles before they um, had to flee Florida and, and many of them went to the Bahamas. And I thought this was real interesting. The College Hill neighborhood in Cincinnati created an exhibit, The Journey Continues, Abolition to Black Lives Matter. And they placed these um, panels in store windows in buildings along a route that was actually used in the Underground Railroad. It was an escape route, and that route is listed in the Network to Freedom. So they made a great uh, point of tying that history to contemporary society. So those were some of the exciting things that happened last year. And I know with all of the creativity on online here that there will be some exciting things going on for this year. So I will pass it back to Roy, I think. Hello, and, and hopefully we've uh, intrigued you enough to uh, ask this question. How can I participate in International Underground Railroad Month in 2021? Uh, there are uh, several ways that you can get involved, and these were ways that uh, many of them which uh, individual partners and states uh, made use of in 2020. Um, you know, part of the building process of uh, getting recognition broadly for International Underground Railroad Month is to, within the U.S., state by state, uh, get states to proclaim that. And, and most of the states in 2020 of the 11 that got state proclamations. It was done through the state governor and it was driven by interested parties within that state uh, working sometimes with uh, uh, state officials or legislators to bring this to the governor's attention using a sample proclamation that had been tailored to um, uh, to their state's underground road history and story and um, uh, so we urge you to work with partners and sites in your state to seek a proclamation from your state's governor to designate September 2021 as International Underground Railroad Month. We had 11 states do that last uh, September, and we won at least 15 this year as we continue to build this process. Um, it's going to vary by from state to state. In some states, there is uh, a designated public or semi-public uh, entity which can come together and uh, seek that proclamation from the governor working with in, in the case of Michigan the Michigan Freedom Trail Commission worked with the Michigan History Center and the um, and the uh, 
State Division of Natural Resources to get that proclamation from Governor Whitmer. In other states, uh, it's kind of the opposite end of the spectrum where there's less of an, a state designated presence and so individual interested parties, individuals, museums, libraries, historical societies, and other groups. Uh, some states like New York, there's an existing network. Other states, that network has to be built, but to come together and to seek a proclamation um, is, is a way to get that recognition within your state as you look towards September. Uh, we urge you to develop trip suggestions and tourism opportunities to promote the underground railroad sites in your region. Um, and uh, states that uh, develop that will be posted on the Network to Freedom website. Uh, these uh, can be, as we wind down from COVID, these can be you know, virtual, as many of them were last year, or they can be suggested driving tours. Um, as time goes on, uh, uh, hopefully those uh, sites will be opening up again. Uh, those that are uh, open to visitors can open up again and uh, 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 more of that kind of tangible uh, connection with history can take place. We encourage you to develop programs either on site or virtually to promote and commemorate the Underground Railroad. Um, Michigan, for example, for several years has had a one day statewide uh, in-person conference, for lack of a better term. Uh, and we moved that early 2020 to September to coordinate with the uh, International Underground Road Railroad Month. And then within a matter of weeks, we had to turn on a dime and make this a uh, virtual series, which took place every Tuesday and Wednesday throughout the the month and that worked out to five weeks. And so we were able, able to do some amazing program panels, sessions, speakers, and even open forums of how you know the state and its citizens want to proceed. And uh, um, we got a lot of positive response from that. This year, for example, we decided it doesn't need to be an either or. And so we are going to have a one day um, on the ground physical conference, but we're also going to, throughout September to have weekly programming uh, orient, oriented about parts of Michigan's story. Um, we urge you to identify Network of Freedom members that are open to the public and would like to participate in the Network of Freedom Passport Program. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Oh, there we go. Um, we urge you to participate in social media camp, a social media campaign for International Underground Railroad Month. Um, Maryland, uh, you know, has been a pioneer in this effort, but uh, there's nothing to prevent uh, from local historical societies to statewide entities uh, doing this. Um, we urge you to identify and share with the Network of Freedom Program web-based content, video, virtual tours, et cetera, that explores underground railroad content in your state or region to be included on the Network of Freedom website. These can be shorter or longer. They can be more local or uh, looking at statewide content. Um, there's a lot of, because of the emphasis of the Network of Freedom on sites, there's visual content that people can work from and we also encourage uh, you to work with you know local figures museums libraries and sites in your area to develop more content you know identify and research the underground railroad stories in your community and contact the network of freedom coordinators to discuss future inclusion in the network of freedom this can be part of a process where you not only identify those stories and possible new sites, but um, uh, become engaged in the process of writing nominations in the future that come out of these uh, to the Network uh, to Freedom program. So there's a lot of ways to get involved. I think the first step is to seek recognition in your state, but also you know, 
these proclamations from governors also from you know other entities there's nothing to say that um within your state county governments municipalities museums historical organizations um indigenous nations to research and tell the story, including uh, programming that's done at the state and local level, but will be posted and highlighted through the Network to Freedom website. So we urge you to get involved. Next slide, please. Uh, the, the next slide is a copy of uh, the state of, America, of, of Maryland's original 2019 proclamation by Governor Larry Hogan, um, which began this process. And uh, the coordinating group here last year put together uh, and then refined this year a sample proclamation, which we'd be glad to share with you. Um, basically, you don't need to reinvent the wheel, but you can tailor it to your particular state or local story and uh uh you know the the uh the template will help you in that process so i urge you to think about that strongly to come together with potential partners in your state and to make sure that your state proclaims international underground Railroad month this september And now pass it along to uh, Amanda. One of these days I'll learn to unmute. Thanks, Roy. Um, so just so you guys know, uh, we are uh, working to develop some communications guidance. Um, the best guidance that we can really give to, to you um, is to work within your local communities, to work within your state, um, to develop things um, like a communications plan, like a social media campaign. Um, the state of Maryland has done this in the past. They've done a great job putting it together. Um, and of course, the Network to Freedom program is happy to help with technical assistance and answering questions about, well, what is the social media campaign? And what goes into creating a social media campaign? Um, and all of that good stuff. Uh, we are also going to hopefully be working to put together um, a partner communications toolkit um, which will include um, our very brand new, um, not yet released um, International Underground Railroad Month logo, which you can see on the left hand side of this screen. Um, it shows um, a man, an individual's face um, put within a sphere or a globe um, and blue and yellow stripes circling around that globe to show movement um, and the word international above and Underground Railroad Month below. Um, this will hopefully be released in a more formal fashion soon, but as long as you all were joining us today, we wanted to give you a sneak peek of this logo. Um, stay tuned for further communications guidance about how this logo is to be used, uh, how to get the files, all of that good stuff. Um, but we're really excited to share uh, that with you. We've been hard at work making this uh, logo over the past several months. Um, we're excited to share. Um, the most important thing is likely to stay in the loop, and you're probably wondering, how can you stay in the loop? Um, of course, within your states and within your local communities, we encourage you all to collaborate together and come up with your own communications norms, how you're going to keep each other in the loop as to what you're doing uh, within the state, within your local community, etc. Um, and if you want to stay in the loop with the Network to Freedom, we will be talking about different things that are going to be going on in International Underground Railroad Month um, on several of our communications platforms. Uh, we encourage you to join our email mailing list. Um, if you checked the little box when you came in and signed up for the webinar, uh, don't worry, you're going to be added to our mailing list. Uh, if not, and you have heard this and now you want to be added in, no problem. Just email us at network underscore underscore. I'm going to try that again. Network underscore two underscore freedom at NPS as a National Park Service dot gov. Um, you're also more than welcome to follow us on Instagram and or Facebook um, at 
Um, you, our handle is at NPS Network to Freedom. And of course, regularly checking um, both of our websites, um, www.nps.gov slash UGRR or slash NTF. Um, we also have a landing page specifically for International Underground Railroad Month, uh, where we will be posting things as we know more um, and as more things are finalized. And I will put that link in the Q&A panel in just a moment when I am done talking. I think I am done talking. Um, so we'll head over to our next slide. Um, this is a mural um, that is located in Cambridge, Maryland. Um, it is located at the Harriet Tubman Museum. It was created by artist Michael Rosado, and it is a painting of Harriet Tubman um, reaching out into the public and um, a young girl actually grabbing the hand of um, Harriet in the mural. Um, so this is our way really to visually invite you to join us on this International Underground Railroad Month journey. Um, with that, we do have some questions that I'm going to go through and I'm going to open it up to our panel um, to answer. Panelists, I can see you. Um, so if you have an answer, feel free to just pop your hand up and then I'll send you in uh, to the queue so that you can answer it. Um, but what we have uh, for our first question is what hashtags do you recommend we use um, when sharing our underground railroad stories? Um, my answer to this um, is we are going to be um, getting that information out to you soon, likely in the partner communications toolkit that we're working to put together or the partner communications toolkit that the state of Maryland will end up coming out with. Um, the Network to Freedom uses the hashtag NPS Network to Freedom. Um, and I believe the state of Maryland often uses the hashtag UGRR to talk about the Underground Railroad. Um, so if you're looking to find hashtags, um, those are probably two good places to start. Um, Panelists, do you have anything else to add with that first question? All right, I'll go ahead and clear. Um, question number two, do you have to have a proclamation to participate? Um, I will zip over to, anybody want to take this? Oh, go ahead. Thanks. You can, you don't need to have a proclamation. You can participate simply by, um, developing a special content, exhibit, programming, um, whatever is in your uh, creativity and, and capacity to do. Um, but I will also say that we will, the Network to Freedom will try to help network people within a state together so that if you do want to work on getting a proclamation, you'll have uh, people that you can work with. Awesome, thank you, Diane. Um, our next question is, when can we expect uh, the International Underground Railroad Month website to be updated with 2021 events? Um, I believe the best answer to that question is as soon as you let us know what you are doing. Um, if you want to let us know um, events that you have in the queue, um, especially if you are a Network to Freedom member, um, we will, um, we're happy to hear and listen and um, help provide that technical assistance about how you can um, get the word out about your programming. Um, so feel free to email us. Um, again, I'll show that email again in just a second. Um, network underscore two underscore freedom at nps.gov. Um, and feel free to let us know about what you're doing. We're really excited to hear about everything that's going to be happening in September. Um, our next question. Um, is how should we approach planning commemorations in regard to COVID-19? Liz will take that one. Well, I think Roy gave us a really great over, gave us a great view of how they pivoted last year. I think that this year in September, we're gonna be looking at a, a, a lot different world than we had last September, right, Roy? And but I think the world of some kind of hybrid events is probably probably going to continue. One reason is the virtual world gives us sometimes a much greater audience, a larger audience, because they don't have to get to a, a place to be able to experience it. So I would just use your creativity and then, of course, follow the guidance of the CDC and your State Department of Health. But I think that um, as Vaccine rollouts have continued, and I know um, our governor has said that he wants life to be back to normal by Memorial Day, and we're we're pretty we're we're 
darn close. And the president has made July 4th um, his national expectation of normal. But I think we'll be seeing hybrid events going forward for the foreseeable future, just because of the, the depth and breadth of the audience that we can reach. Amanda, if I can piggyback on that, uh, you know, just our experience last year uh, compared to the previous years, uh, I think we, we don't want to get away from either. And hybrid is, I think, as you said, Liz, the path of future. We got much more intense involvement when we had in person and we developed some great relationships between the Freedom Trail Commission and many of the folks that showed up to those earlier in person sessions to the point that they're now serving on some of our subcommittees and getting involved and really and contacting us to help uh, have us hold their hand as they go through the process of developing site nominations and these kinds of things. On the other hand, we tripled, as I recall, the number of people who were participants in our September programming last year when it was all virtual versus the year before when it was all in person. So you, you know, again, to, to reinforce your recommendation and suggestion, Liz, I think there's there's some data building and I've seen this in other venues that we don't really want to get away from either if we can do both. Thanks, Roy, and thanks, Liz. And I'm just going to add, um, as myself, um, I think that the most important thing to remember is that this is still an ever-evolving situation. Um, always continue to look to your state and local guidance um, and defer to your state and local guidance when it comes on thinking about what to do. Um, you can never have too many backup plans, um, but always look to them for guidance um, in this still ever-changing situation. Um, our last question that we have right now, and obviously we, we're still taking them, um, how can individuals and nonprofits participate? Um, I lead a walking tour to commemorate the 200th, I led a walking tour to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the birth of William Still, father of the Underground Railroad. His South Philly home is the last stop on the tour. The row house is listed on the Philadelphia Register of Historic Places. Liz got it. Well, you know, coming from the tourism side, you know, the first thing that I'm going to always recommend is to get in touch with um, your DMO, your destination marketing organization. Um, they they will be involved in that and being able to have that conversation with them that you have this amazing tour. And I would encourage you to reach out to your network to freedom partners that are here today to get your walking tour listed as a program in the Network to Freedom so you could take advantage of the passport programs that they do and the promotion of having the National Park Service, um, having a National Park Service good housekeeping seal of approval, if you will, for, for your program. I think it'd definitely be one of the things that you should look into, but always get in touch with your DMO at the local level, the uh, Philadelphia's um, Convention and Visitors Bureau, and then I know that there's a, a Philadelphia Consumer Visitors Bureau also. And then, of course, the Pennsylvania Office of Tourism. Alrighty, awesome. Thank you, Liz. And our, I think, last question now um, is, uh, actually, there's two. Uh, do you have a draft proclamation text to share? Yes. Um, I threw um, a link to the Maryland Office of Tourism's website with the sample proclamation text um, into the Q&A. I will throw it in there, though, one more time. Um, the Maryland Office of Tourism um, is the one to look to for all of that type of stuff. Um, next question was, please describe site. Can a museum that is not located on an actual site be considered a site? Diane, I think this might be in reference to the Network to Freedom program. I think you might be the best one to answer. Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, in the Network to Freedom program, that situation, the museum would be called a program for its interpretation of the ex of the exhibits at the museum. So um, you can still be in the Network to Freedom as a program, and I would encourage you to reach out to the Network to Freedom coordinator for your area. Alrighty. 
Thank you, Diane. And I think that is all that we have. Um, for if you have additional feedback, if you have questions, comments, concerns, um, any feedback on our accessibility, um, that uh, 508 compliance, anything like that, um, or just comments, questions, uh, you we encourage you to please email your questions, comments, and concerns to network underscore to the word to underscore freedom um, at nps.gov. Um, I will plot that in the chat one more time just to make sure that everybody has it who needs it. Um, I live clearly in a city, so I do apologize for the noise, um, background noise on my end right now. Um, but we really appreciate you all being here today and joining us. Um, if you think of any other questions, you are we are more than happy to um, answer all of those. Um, so feel free to reach out. Uh, thank you guys very much. We look very forward to working with you and we are very much looking forward to September 2021.